that is life. It seems the crypto companies are playing poker as crypto giants are threatening to leave the U.S. So companies like Coinbase and Ripple are trying to make regulators in the U.S. take their threats to lead the country very seriously. The U.S. Securities Exchange Commission has taken a hard line on the industry. We all know pointing their guns at these firms claiming a lot of their assets are unregistered securities. So major players are hoping that the SEC and Washington soften their stance. Although companies like Coinbase and Ripple have threatened to leave the country, the practicalities of moving such large firms would be difficult. And the U.S. is a large market for the industry. So crypto executives' tough talk may be a common tactic to rally support and send a message to regulators. It seems that they are most likely bluffing. And of course, if this article on CNBC claims that they are bluffing, then the SEC probably thinks so as well. But that's not to say that they won't just pack their bags and leave if SEC regulation continues to put that hard, heavy hammer at these exchanges. Ever since the whole FTS collapse, everybody has been on a huge magnifying glass. And you can't blame them because the whole FTX collapse happened under the SEC's nose. So they're trying to make sure another hiccup like that doesn't end up happening once again. But ultimately, them pushing too hard is just going to push these companies out of the U.S. And that is just less money, less taxations, less jobs and such in the economy. So we have here Zimbabwe and the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe sold $39 million worth of gold-backed digital tokens despite a warning from the International Monetary Fund. So it seems the IMF warns everybody that it is not a good idea to go against what they want to be the monetary policy. So the tokens were sold at a minimum price of $10 for individuals and $5,000 for corporations and other entities. The move is an effort to stabilize the country's economy and continued depreciation of the local currency against the U.S. dollar. Because inflation is seeing massive, or if the U.S. dollar is seeing inflation at a above 6% rate, and it's the world's currency, do you imagine what Zimbabwe is going through and a multitude of other countries across the world regarding inflation? So the IMF has cautioned against the African nation's plan for the gold-backed currency, arguing it should instead liberalize its foreign exchange market, and then issuing the concern. The reason for that is because they believe it's going to increase government or governance risk, legal and operational risk, and the cost of foregone and foreign exchange reserves. So increasing governance risk means that there is going to be less control over that monetary policy for the IMF. And that is actually a concern for IMF and not Zimbabwe. We know IMF's end goal is to have one world currency. What makes IMF is a multitude of the richest families and powerful people who help out nations that fit their quota. So we have Binance here. The world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, they announced that it is withdrawing from Canada. So it's not just Coinbase and Ripple, Binance has had it as well. They cited the country's recent regulations for cryptocurrency exchanges, including investor limits and mandatory registrations, are too high. Binance said it does not agree with the latest guidance and hopes to engage with Canadian regulators to create a comprehensive framework for crypto operations in the country. So the CSA, which is the Canadian Securities Administrators, have issued these requirements for unregistered crypto asset trading platforms. Now it is to include their pre-registration undertaking. These include more prescriptive commitments regarding custody of crypto assets and restrictions on using assets held on behalf of Canadian clients. It does make sense because if everyone's depositing all this crypto on the exchange and the exchange is using that crypto to trade on another exchange, that's going to lead to major problems like we saw with Alameda Research. So it's also going to enhance requirements for retaining a chief compliance officer and that compliance officer is most likely going to be picked 
by the CSA in most cases, and CTP is failing to comply, it may face penalties and sanctions. So Binance said they have or want nothing to do with that because the CSA is getting way too involved into the company's business and doing so is just going to scare crypto giants away. So hopefully US doesn't fall into this same issue that we are seeing in Canada because this is going to have a bigger blowback to the economy in terms of jobs, in terms of taxation, money flowing, and opportunities for individuals to invest in the market through this exchange or these exchanges. Binance being one of the largest cryptocurrencies in the world, that does create sort of an issue in that aspect for Canada as crypto is the future. So taking a look at uh, cryptocurrencies price point, Bitcoin's price point here, I saw that a bounce was imminent to re-attempt that resistance here on May 10th. We ended up hitting that resistance at 28,000. We hit a high of 28,317 before dropping back down. Now this pullback was huge, a 7% pullback in two days. I am absolutely sick of what the traders are doing to the cryptocurrencies volatility. But as you can see, we had some positive news here with a green positive cup and handle formation that formed on Saturday, May 13th. And that's ultimately going to drive us forward towards back to those $27,900 price point levels very soon. So it's only up from here. But if we do hit this wall and bounce back down, and we're just going to reject back down to the $26,000 price point levels. And that's ugly levels to be at, especially in a bullish month like May. The bears are doing everything they can to hold down Bitcoin and the overall altcoin market. If you guys enjoyed this update, be sure to smash that like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next one.